Your host today are AK and Ivana. And for this special edition, um, we have invited you, Christian, to have a talk about the first two chapters of the book. Yes, that's true. Thank you very Welcome, much for the invitation. I look forward to that. Thank you for coming. And and so, today's our roles are going to be a little bit reversed because uh, Christian is actually going to be interviewing uh, me and AK about the book and not us interviewing him. That's right. Because um, I know both of you from my work perspective. And when I uh, started following your, your book, uh, I got more and more curious. What, how would you deal with the issues and the... Uh, the problems and opportunities that uh, that uh, we see in uh, in Zebra. Uh, so therefore, uh, I suggested that why don't you uh, actually uh, share your thoughts on uh, on this topic? So thank you for taking that challenge. Yeah, this is super exciting and also a little bit scary because usually yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> So, so should I just jump into it? Yes. Because Let's do this. I understand that um, that a lot of people have followed uh, the, the progress of the story uh, the, the the previous half year. Uh, but if there was uh, a newcomer uh, today here, could you briefly summarize what is uh, what is the main uh, the steps that has been going on in the first chapters and, uh, and what is the main focus that has been. Absolutely, I can I can start. So basically, so far we have uh, released two chapters of the story. And uh, during these chapters, we have been spending some time on introducing the different characters of the book and some of the dynamics going on inside of the uh, fictional company Zebra Apps. Um, mainly those in the HR department where the main character Marie works together with her boss, v, uh, the VP of HR, Mark, and then uh, the, the development HR team and the operational HR team. Um, and, uh, and the way we are introduced to Zebra Apps is, uh, is the last day of the month where another employee is resigning. And that's a pattern that's been going on for some time in this company. So, so this, uh, Marie character, the main character of the story. She's the head of development HR, and she's really, she's really facing this issue of a lot of employees resigning. And uh, it's mainly some of the very senior employees in the company, like people who have a long history in the company, that are leaving. And uh, and she's the 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 CEO of the company is asking Marie to fix this issue because she is HR. So who else would fix it? And uh, and that that leads to Marie looking into like why are people leaving? What is the problem? And it it seems that when she looks at the competitors, there's not really any anything different differentiating them other than that the competitors competitors have soda soda free soda available in the company. Um, so there's a lot going on there about uh, trying to figure out why are we losing good people. Do you want to add to this, Ivana? Yeah, I, I think that was a, a very good summary. Um, we we also get to know some of the uh, more detailed uh, dynamics uh, in some of the teams. For example, we also get introduced to this character of uh, Anne, who was once upon a time with the company uh, who built the most successful products that this company ca has called Aslo, which is a... Um, uh, a tool that reverses uh, how school works. Instead of uh, having instruction during the class, uh, you can have instructions uh, virtually at home. And then you focus more on doing assignments and uh, learning by doing uh, in, in class, which is a tool that they developed during COVID. Um, and uh, there's also the, the background of uh, the, the war in Ukraine uh, that we follow through the story also where some of the employees at Zebra tried to request that this program could be provided for free to all the refugees uh, fleeing from Ukraine so that the children could still receive instruction while they were on the run. 
Uh, but there was resistance from the leadership of Zebra to, to provide this program, even though they had the capacity to do so. Uh, and part of what we're also unfolding is understanding more well, uh, which company dynamics led to uh, this um, not happening. Uh, mm -hmm. And also some of the employees that we see resign, uh, this is one of the reasons that they choose to leave Zebra apps is because they, they felt strongly about the humanitarian use of their software and it was not possible to achieve that. Mm. So, so you can say that there's like what Marie finds out in these first chapters that many people mentioned the exit interviews that something something changed during the past year um, and she can also just see that during this time is when the company has grown a lot on the commercial side but maybe moved a bit away from the purpose like the, the original purpose of the company does the character called Natalie who's she uh, she's the CEO of the company uh, and also uh, one of the two founders. Mm -hmm. uh, the company was founded by herself uh, and Richard. Um, and uh, Natalie used to be a teacher. Uh, so she founded this company thinking about how can we develop uh, teaching uh, from a, also, you can say, a humanitarian perspective. Uh, and Richard was the technology guy uh, that she founded the company with. Uh, but she and Richard had a falling out uh, and he left the company uh, and they had a falling out because the company was uh, uh, struggling financially and they had very different ways of coping with that where mm -hmm. Richard wanted to double down on their values and principles uh, Natalie um, well basically got scared and wanted to focus more on uh, well how can they control more how can they make sure that they make money mm -hmm. Uh, and that is also a lot of uh, what drives her is uh, how can how can she create this financial success um, that she feels she lost control over when they when the company hit this hiccup. So that's also a very interesting dynamic. The last thing before we move on to uh, to, to 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 asking you about your positions is where did we leave the 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 organization uh, after chapter two? So what what happened just before we left them? Yeah. So I can just say that at least some of it. Basically, what happened um, was that the Marie's boss, Mark, the VP of HR, he gets a bit upset that Marie got this task from Natalie. So he basically commits her to do a culture program mm -hmm. in Zebraps or to launch a huge culture program to get back on track on the on the company culture with the company culture and. Um, and that's a, like that's i think that's a very typical situation that um, that it becomes like an hr problem when it has to do with 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 like the cultural part so she starts thinking of how can i develop this culture program and uh, plans together with her team a leadership offsite where they will go to kind of discuss the values of the company which she she finds out actually existed from the beginning, but was lost somewhere in the process of the company, uh, of the company's growth. So she kind of wants to rediscover these old values, and the, and that's the purpose of this leadership offsite that will happen in the next chapter. Yeah, so do they complete the offsite? Yeah, in in chapter they, two, we yes. we follow the uh, the leadership offsite, yes. uh, and it uh, does not quite go as uh, Marie would have liked. Uh, the, the way that they structure this offsite is that uh, they have a, a general um, uh, uh, Natalie presents the values that the company was founded on uh, and then there is some uh, some debate in the room whether these values still apply and uh, Natalie's leadership team challenge her to see if, if she still sticks by them uh, <clears throat> and we do see a bit of an opening here where, where Natalie actually does uh, she explains the whole situation with how the company was founded with uh, with Richard um, and does stand by the values. Then there are some individual uh, breakouts where uh, each a member of the leadership team do some more work on the values and, and how they feel they apply. Uh, and here we uh, follow Marie as she uh, works with Jacques. Uh, Jacques is the VP of sales at Zebra. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first time we meet uh, Jacques in chapter one, 
uh, he is late for his uh, coaching session with Marie and is quite resistant to the whole idea of being coached. Um, but during this offside, we actually understand a little bit of where, where he's coming from uh, and some of the challenges he had in the past company where he worked, uh, where um, they did undergo a leadership or they did undergo a cultural transformation at the company as a whole. And we also, uh, we meet that company a couple of times through other connections that Marie has. Um, but he also explains that uh, the reason why he thought it was hard to undergo this cultural transformation is that he put in all the work to uh, rise through the hierarchy. Uh, and once he finally uh, got to the top of the hierarchy in the company, uh, the culture changed. And now uh, it was no longer valued to being the top of the hierarchy. And so he felt a sense of loss uh, um, and also maybe um, a sense of uh, shame a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, it did not necessarily align with him to uh, rise in the hierarchy the way that he did. But he did it to get there and then suddenly the rule changed. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was very frustrating for him. Um, and also during this offsite, uh, we, we learned that some uh, drama happens with one of the other uh, leadership team members, uh, Frank, who was the CFO of this company. Uh, he storms out from his session uh, with uh, that was facilitated by Shiva, one of uh, Marie's employees. Uh, and, uh, and we don't know why. But we do know that he actually retires afterwards. He, it's a... Uh... It's it's uh, yeah communicated the next week that he left to see perhaps. So that's, that's a huge cliffhanger where... for chapter three. Exactly. So that's actually where we are right now. So mm. that that's the background we can use when we talk about uh, how would you uh, uh, deal with this situation. So before we do that, I have a question um, because uh, as part of of this podcast, every time you have released. Uh, an episode, you have also had a discussion with an expert guest. And I just want to ask you, which of these uh, conversations have made the biggest impression on you? It, it may be very different from those of you because uh, they have been very different. Why? And uh, is, is there anything from that that has changed the way you, you work? Mm. It's a great question. Well, yeah, really good question. I would be happy to to answer uh, first. So it's a, honestly a bit hard to to choose like which one was the most um, like the one that left the biggest impression because I think they all do in different ways. But I can for sure say that something that made me reconsider how I work was our chapter with Benoit Hurel from um, the Ready, um, and and this was because he talked a lot about this. Um, complexity consciousness and thinking of um, organizations as systems and having this approach to like talking about the operating system mm -hmm. um, and looking into the organization through different lenses. And I actually kind of took everything he said and I went back and read more about it and I went like did everything that I could to try to start to apply it in my own work like the next week. <laughs> so that was super helpful for a very specific task that I was working on at that yes. point. Yeah, nice. and I, I thought so he brought some Megan. really, really, really great perspectives. Sorry. No, thank you. I think, uh, well, one episode that really changed the way that I work was with uh, Heidi Hilfand. Uh, we we touched it a little bit during the episode. Uh, something about the way that we structure teams and mm -hmm. the stability of teams. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Heidi had actually written a book about this uh, that I went on to read afterwards, uh, where I realized that, well, one of the key assumptions that I have held for a very long time is that uh, team stability uh, is very important. Uh, and the sta the more stable the team, uh, the, the better the collaboration within the team. Uh, where in Heidi's book, she um, stipulates that, yes, team stability is nice, but it's impossible. Teams will change uh, whether you want it or not. So the question is, well, how do you get really good at adjusting teams when they change? Mm. Um, and and that, that has been something that I have been thinking about a lot. Well, uh, how do you build in this change readiness in the teams mm. instead of necessarily always trying to protect that change doesn't happen? 
Yeah, that that kind of shifted my mindset on a uh, on some, one of the core beliefs that I've had for a very long time. Yes, interesting. It's like an orchestra. How can you retain the soul and the yes, the, uh, the the spirit while people are being uh, exchanged? Yeah. yeah and then I think uh, okay maybe for uh, both of us the conversation with Dr. Ross. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that was, was very spot on. He yeah. was uh, he was very direct <laughs> in his feedback to Marie. <laughs> yes. So maybe we can come back to that. Uh, what you would tell Marie. So when we go forward, um, I don't want you to uh, think as the authors. Uh, so the story is as it is. That it has its reasons and so on. So uh, it's more. How would you? react in a similar situation and then and what do you think is, is up and, and down in this so the first question is of course obvious if you should find somebody in the in the uh, in the story that uh, you would be in real life if i met you in some <laughs> organization you have to choose between one of the people there's a lot of people in the story <laughs> who would you be so <laughs> Yeah, Ivana. Ooh. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, um, well, I, I think well the, the obvious choice would be Marie. Uh, taking on the uh, the battle for better organizations. Uh, but in, in many ways, uh, I identify with Marie, but in in many ways also I do not. <laughs> uh, so there are also some uh, side characters that uh, I think I also see myself in as someone like Willie, uh, <laughs> who, who used to be the the janitor of the data center, but uh, got retrained to be an engineer. Uh, I I feel a lot of uh, like internal congruence with with this character. <laughs> Interesting. And AK? Yeah. So I obviously also kind of identify with Marie because I think um yeah, I really I really feel for how how hard it is to actually navigate all these um mm -hmm. dysfunctions in a company. So it's not like I mean, I understand when you read or listen to the story, sometimes she makes some strange choices, but I also just think that it's illus it's it's very illustrative of how real life can be sometimes. So I, I do think that I would probably make some of the same choices as she do as she does, even though I can see like when you look at it from the outside that it it's not always the best thing to do. Um but I do think another character who who would I want to be or who would I like like to be like I think that would be maybe Eric from Marie's team. I think he displays a lot of good leadership skills even though he's not the formal leader of the team uh, because that's Marie but I think that he takes on some responsibility in keeping like um, the well-being of the team uh, up and and really he he helps Marie see some of the things that she's missing because she's so busy with trying to just figure out how to survive in this company and to me he's the wise guy in this and I would, yeah, I would like to be that person, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, I would so like to see myself already. You have already answered my second question because uh, that was my second question: Who would you like to be? Because there's yeah. a, a, normally a very a big difference between who we are and uh, and sometimes also who we want to be. So, <laughs> so yeah. what about uh, Ivana? Is there something else you want to be? I I would like to be Richard, uh, the the guy who started the company with Natalie. Yes. Uh, and the guy who put a lot of the good culture in place mm. at Zebra, mm. Uh, mm. the one who uh, insisted that they build a value-based company mm. and mm. that they give freedom to the developers, mm. uh, and that even in the face of financial difficulties, that he still believed that mm. by creating a, a, a work mm. uh, place suitable for humans, that mm. uh, the financial part will be sorted out also. I would like to be Richard. Are you willing to sacrifice what it takes? Uh, the 
the potential sacrifice of financial success for how it feels to be uh, in the company? <laughs> <laughs> no, at, at the point where he's forced out, there uh, it's not very obvious, I guess, what the future would be. And it takes something to stand on your values and on your beliefs and be the idealistic founder of a company in that situation. And, and mm. it, it, you may end up sacrificed uh, as he did. So, 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 so I'm just asking you, yeah. it, how, how, what does it take? And are we as human beings ready to, to make that sacrifice and, and why? And that I think is is uh, an important question, uh, and uh, this is aspirational, right? So I, I would aspire ah, to be yes, the person yes, who would yes, be yes. willing <laughs> to do yes, to uh, like take that, that stance. Yes. Yes. But yeah, but I will I also say that. that. Sorry. Go on. I just want to say that I think this is one of the important um, characteristics of this book that all the people we meet in the book they're very human. So like yes. Natalie, she's um, she's might like sometimes she doesn't come off as the maybe greatest CEO of the of the world, but she's a, she's very, I think there's a, a good explanation for why she is acting as she is, because she's also under a lot of pressure. And I think that's how reality is sometimes that we can, I'm sure she also ex, um, like aspired to be in a certain way when she started the company, but that just changed due to yes. the circumstances they're operating under. So she actually changed her idealism and when I read it, I see her as the realist and uh, Richard as the idealist. Um, yeah. And that, that ended up in, in some situations. And I, I really want to compliment the book because uh, it's, uh, it's very authentic. And you have managed to, uh, to make the characters very authentic. Uh, and that uh, makes the book uh, read worthy or uh, listen worthy. Uh, but also, that's why. I feel I learn a lot from it. If it has been ideal characters as it often is in business literature, I'm not sure I could learn so much. So, so very well done. Um, and I like that. We are only humans and it's air, uh, it's, it's, it's a human to air. And, um, and uh, that's what we see here. That's good. So, so that's, that's uh, a good introduction to, to some of the characters. To me, Anne and Marie are the two most interesting characters. Uh, first of all, they don't have so much formal power. The formal mm -hmm. power is actually distributed to other people. But their informal power uh, turns out through the first chapters, as we see, uh, to be greater than they even themselves uh, understood in the first place. So, so they realize and recognize that, that they have that power and, and, and they use it in different ways. Uh, Marie stays and then... And, and, has a bit of hope for, for changing things. Uh, Anne has learned that she is, she is actually uh, more powerful than she thought and, and used that to quit the company and use her forces in other places. So two very strong characters um, and very, very different. Um, because, and I'm not sure, and, and you may uh, correct me, uh, if I met these two in real life, one of them to me, would be the consultant type, Marie, mm -hmm. and Anne would be the team player that is uh, committed uh, to the team. Marie still seems like somebody who hopes to fix or cure the illness as a doctor outside the organization, mm -hmm. where Anne was so involved in the organization, so she either had to, 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 to fulfill her mission or quit. So I, I get this old uh, picture, you know, the difference between the chicken and the pig. So uh, <laughs> in a bacon and egg breakfast, what's the difference between the chicken and the pig? The chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. <laughs> and I'm not sure, but when I read this, Marie, <laughs> sorry, is the chicken and, uh, and it's the pig. Uh, is that characters we meet uh, a lot in real life? And my question is, if you were only hired, uh, allowed in the organization to hire one of them, both of them applies for the job, you're only allowed to hire uh, one of them in the current phase of c -Brams. Who would you hire? To help? Good question. And it also, uh, um, I, I think for a lot of people working in 
uh, agile transformation or in the agile space in general? This is a very real question. Do you want mm -hmm. to be the pig or the chicken? Do you want to be uh, in the work, in the organization, or do you want to become a consultant that, that comes and goes? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an uh, yeah, interesting choice for many. Um, I think if I, if I was to hire one person uh, for Zebra apps, uh, I would I would probably pick Anne. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because uh, she may be able to. Ah, that's actually that's a great question. This this gets me thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because uh, she's a queen. Do we want to? <laughs> she is a good. <laughs> but she under she understands that it's a it's a very human work. Like she, mm -hmm. uh, the way that she navigates is by uh, speaking to people, by bridging the disconnects. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's uh, in the work where Marie sometimes is well. She simplifies things quite a bit, maybe mm -hmm. because of her background as a consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, and does not necessarily understand uh, the full picture or the uh, the very real intentions um, that are can be different than the org chart of the organization. Um, so I, if I was to bet for who can uh, make change happen, it would probably be Anne. But here, yet we are with a situation where Anne actually left because she didn't feel like she could uh, do the change. And and yep. that's maybe my that's maybe what I would add because I agree I would also pick Anne but it would demand that Anne would get the room or like the wiggle room or the the option to actually work in the way that she believes is the right way because I think in the in the current setup of Zebra apps Anne would not be able to succeed and I think that's why she left because she could just see that and you could it say in the current situation if Anne was going to succeed. Wasn't that because of the work that Marie has started? Mm. Because now there's another situation, there's another awareness and management. Maybe there could be room for Anne now, but she would probably not have been able to take it. I don't know, but of course it's, <laughs> it's future. So, so, but it's more, if I was in that situation, I only had money for one. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, what does it take? To, uh, to to change an organization inside out. One of the problems with Anne is that she's not a leadership interfaceable. Uh, she's uh, very good at uh, making, you can say, the the heart of the organization or the engine room of the organization making mm. that work. Mm. Uh, but it seems like she's not able to convince Natalie uh, what needs to be done or, or even Jenny, the VP of development. Mm. Uh, and and that is a challenge because you also do need to have your leadership uh, supporting the way that you're working. Yes, that's true. So these two individuals, and I think still still think they are some of the most interesting, uh, the keys to to the solution. Uh, and, and you can you you can of course uh, disagree with that, but still let's talk about them. They have their different personalities. And as a reader, it seems to be their personality more than their, uh, their expertise that uh, gives them the informal power. So this company has grown from a very small company to a larger company. And still it's two people with personality that has had the most influence. Is that an issue in, uh, in our organizations? Uh, and is it something that we really are aware of? How much personality uh, needs for for transformation and things like that? Um, so, so would you, uh, if you were going to hire somebody, you would be very dependent on this person. If it was one of these two guys, would you take that risk, and why? That is another that is also, yeah. question. <laughs> that is also a really good question. Hmm. Uh, I, I think I would say that that we would like to believe that personality or the individual does not play a role, that we can create organizations where we have 
uh, roles. This is the role that will do X. Um, I think I may be disillusioned, but I I no longer believe that that is uh, the truth. I don't think that happens. I think that uh, every transformation in an organization is dependent on the person and the person's personal power. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes you can learn some of that power from the role mm -hmm. you have in the organization, but most often it comes from you as an individual and the, the personal relationships you have with other people. And that's my that's my current thinking. Once upon a time, I thought that it was more about, oh, I have a specific job. That means I can do X. Now I think I am this specific person. That means I can do X. I was taught leadership in the 80s, and we were always taught never be dependent on individuals. Never be independent, independent on individuals. Um, but everything I read, everything I see, big changes I see, I'm always amazed what how much the individual personality uh, actually influence the transformation. That's, that's what, and and that's yeah, that's interesting. And and then what if that's true? If if that's uh, as you say, Ivana, uh, something we need to to, to know. Why don't we uh, include that in our management uh, models, theories? We do to some degree. Uh, but it's more like psychological profiles and things like that. It's not really using the personality. Mm. But can we do that? I, I think uh, for me, that's that's one of the reasons why talking about uh, roles or advancement ladders uh, or these, uh, you can say, uh, person void ways of thinking about mm. how the movements in our in organizations mm. They they never really work make sense because if you have a person who maybe they are in this role right now, but uh, for some reason they can also do this role, mm -hmm. uh, then you would circumvent whatever model you have created for uh, movements within the organizational hierarchy anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I think my solution so far is well, let's just um, admit to ourselves that people matter mm -hmm. uh, and that people matter more than roles. Uh, and and then have those frank discussions about the people instead of uh, what they're supposed to be the boxes that they're supposed to be in. Yeah, and and I also think that I mean you asked is it an is it an issue um, that you can that 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 personality is the thing that will give you the most power or like in the case of Maria and Anne, um, of course it can be an issue in terms of what you also mentioned of like being dependent on individuals but i just think that's a given so i think it's more a question of finding out how to how to uh, find a way to leverage that um mm. cuz i would also like to believe that if you bring your authentic self to work and you do what you know um you fulfill your that's a, that's the best way to fulfill your potential um mm. and uh, then you might the, i'm sure that if if everybody got better at that we would just improve uh, organizations mm -hmm. and Marie and Anne are two people who I feel are very authentic in the way that they bring themselves to work. Mm -hmm. Whereas a character like Mark, for instance, mm -hmm. is obviously playing some games and hiding something and not telling everything and not communicating. And maybe Marie can get better at that too. I, I won't, she can certainly get better at communicating and being transparent, but I think she tries. Yeah, she, she falls uh, a couple of times into into her own traps but the, yeah, that, that, that's, that's true good. It's, that, that's great it's it's it's, it's a great uh, authentic person you have described there i really like it so but it, it ends up having a, a huge impact on the organization um and and uh, i'll not try to find the root causes for this you have had experts uh to, to discuss that for every episode uh but 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 there's no doubt that one of the uh, root causes is that end left. Mm. So it's 10 months since, and everybody says this company has changed uh, dramatically within the last year. Um, there's, of course, much more root causes, I know, and, and you cannot, uh, the, there's not such thing as root causes, but causes. Um, but it, it turns out that the dependency that the organization had on end actually uh, had a big impact. So, so it's a high risk thing. Mm. Uh, so it's not easy to be a manager today. Where you both have to 
build teams and you want to be independent of individuals. And on the other hand, if you really want to change the world, you need uh, individuals. I'll not fix that. You are here to fix it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So, so, so again, uh, and, and I'm sorry because I'm fascinated by these two two, two, two people. A lot of this uh, telling is about culture. Um, so, 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 uh, sixty to eighty percent is about the, the culture in Sigma. Um and there's no doubt that uh, all the experts you have uh, discussed with, they are also looking into to the cultural part, and especially uh, the, 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 the um, uh, Benoit, uh, uh, no, mm. I'm sorry, Frederick Lalo uh, is in behind uh, here, and, and, and people relate to, 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 to him. Um, so, and I don't know if I interpret this right, but I'm a reader, so I can interpret, inter interpret as I want. Uh, yes. If I see right, Maria, Marie thinks the solution to this organization would be what we could call a family-oriented uh, mm. uh, organization or, or, or culture. What is in Lalu would be the green organization, mm. where Anne seems to prefer the self-management or the teal organization. Where we are right now, if you were going to choose, because Marie has started a culture program, but I'm not sure uh, I can see where she's heading and what her target is, as far as I can see. Uh, what would be your target culture? That's another great question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's very well uh, characterized that the, the target culture that these two have in mind is in fact different. Uh, yeah. And also uh, the way that they try to bring it about uh, hints at the tools that you have in these two mm. of, um, mm. ideologies, I almost want to say. Mm. Um, I think uh, th there's a difference between what I, I as a person would thrive best in culturally. Mm. Uh, mm. And I think what is the target culture for an organization given where it currently is. Because you also need to listen to where, where is their organization currently mm -hmm. uh, and can it reasonably move mm -hmm. uh, w given the people that are in that organization. Uh, and uh, Zebra uh, is in, well, in some pockets, green, uh, mm -hmm. in some pockets, orange, mm -hmm. uh, in some pockets, even red, uh, mm -hmm. depending on where you look. Uh, mm -hmm. So teal may be out of reach uh, for some of the uh, places of Zebra, uh, and especially uh, the way that the leadership team is currently functioning, they, they might be the ones to, that are furthest from uh, a teal culture. Um, as, as a person, uh, I would definitely prefer uh, being in, in, the, in that state. Yeah. Uh, but whether that is where Zebra needs to go or can reasonably go within a short amount of time uh, is a good question. I don't think it's possible to move straight to a teal organization. I think it would require some time and some steps. Um, and I also think it's fine that there are some pockets and then that it couldn't evolve from there. But I do agree that as long as the leadership team is the current team, I don't think they have a chance. Is it desirable? So if you could make a miracle and you meet tomorrow in Zebra, would you be the best, most optimal way of running Zebra going forward in the next two years? Well, even Lalu himself uh, creates a paradox there because he, he says that uh, the most important thing is to listening to the organization's evolutionary purpose. Hmm. Uh, and that uh, may call for teal, but it may also not. Hmm. Uh, so whether it's desirable, that is a, a value-laden statement or, or question. Yeah, I, I don't think we're religious in that sense. No, no. <laughs> I didn't. It, it was not because I was, I was asking for if you saw it as a generic ideal. It was more in Zebra, mm. in this yeah. very organization. Yeah. What would be to you the ideal? And, and, and you both say it's probably the family metaphor, 
uh, I'm not so happy about uh, everything with Lalu, uh, but, but but he's also very uh, open about that it's not one culture in mm -hmm. and all. So he, you have a lot of cultures, and these cultures have to develop together and emerge and things like that. And so 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 having said that, uh, it's there's of course not one culture we, we are looking for. It depends but, on on the part. But also, so, I think they're too far. Uh, they they I don't think that they can. Uh, create an orange culture anymore. Uh, there are too many uh, areas yeah. of zebra uh, that are uh, green. Yes. Um, so I don't think that orange can be the common denominator anymore. That would frustrate too many people and too many people uh, would leave. So going back to that, because that was one of my next questions, is it a problem that an organization in, in, in growth, uh, having faced financial issues, have survived them, uh, successfully, it seems. Uh, is it an issue that they are now exchanging people, that they are getting another type of people in than those who uh, started the company? We have this old, uh, the four M's that you probably uh, know, the, there's the main uh, phase, there's the movement phase, there's the machine phase, and, uh, and a lot of organizations uh, that they still use to end up as a monument. Uh, that's uh, it's it's how we have seen things and, and 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 that's how nature works. So, is it desirable to 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 keep people? Is it a problem? Do Marie have a problem at all? I I, I will say I do believe that now we've only seen two chapters and and yeah. what what I see now is people getting more and more frustrated. I believe personally that this will eventually impact the. Um, results of the company mm. so we mm. don't really hear about that yet we don't really know if it will have an impact mm. on the outcome or on, on what the company delivers mm. but i do believe that if we have an engineering department that are incapable of um working the way they they want to be because of some mm. cultural or i don't know stru structural things mm. um eventually that will lead to a, a bad outcome i think mm. that i think that the that aslo and their other products will be flawed Mm. Um, but but I yeah so so in that sense yes I think it's a problem I think mm. we see a problem right here because the people are not thriving in the company and I don't think they're able to work together in in the way that that can make the company perform. And you had to say that of course because else you could end the the book. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's a difference between I don't think that it's a problem that people are leaving. It's a mm. problem that people leaving is a symptom of dysfunction in the company. Yeah, mm. yeah, I agree. I agree that it, it's not a problem that that you get new employees and there's a turnover and, and so on. But in this specific case, I think I agree that it's a symptom that people are leaving and that, um, yeah, this uncovers this whole problem we we mm. have with the with the work culture. The people that, and, and it's not very clear from the book, but the people who replace the ones who uh, resigned uh, seems to be more, if we stay in this uh, in this uh, Lalu thing, orange, but uh, from a machine uh, oriented culture, more bureaucrats, uh, more process oriented and things like that. Isn't that natural when a company grows that you attract uh, such people and that will change the culture? Mm. Or... I think this is where uh, the company has a conscious choice. Mm. Uh, do they want to uh, attract mm. candidates like that? I, are they willing to say, well, this is the, the journey we're on now. Mm. Uh, we were a nice startup uh, once mm. upon a time. Now we are turning into a machine. Uh, if if the company is willing to do that, then then I think they should hire people who would thrive uh, in, in the machine met metaphor. Mm. If, if they're not, if they think that uh, our culture will be our differentiating factor, then mm. for the love of God, don't hire those people <laughs> because mm. they will change your culture. Mm. So it's Richard versus Natalie. Yes. Natalie who says, if if I need to change my values, I will change them. That's a higher purpose. Uh, Richard saying the higher purposes are uh, our values. I will change the organization to uh, to, to align with these. Um, but Richard is, is out. So uh, you should not tell me what's going on in the, in the coming uh, coming uh, chapters. But if you were Marie, would you stay there right now? 
in this situation, you, not Marie, but you, mm. the person you are, would you stay there right now? Or would you I, be on the I would, I would stay. Yes. At least to see how this unfolds and at least to give it a try. <laughs> so you, you'll be the courier. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, but that's the consultant uh, way of thinking. So I'll be here. I'll stay a bit outside. I'll try to 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 to, to influence this and see where it goes. Uh, so 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 yes, uh, that 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 I think Marie will do. Uh, so so what? Yeah, I think I would stay too. Uh, but but that would be because uh, the team that Marie's part of uh, nourishes her, um, and she feels. Um, she she she's firmly rooted mm -hmm. in this organization. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that my cue to leave is is once my roots are cut, yes. Yes. Uh, and and I don't belong anymore. Then then, then I leave. Yes. Interesting, because it's the same conclusion, but a bit different uh, reason but, but I, I like that. But I also much. I also I believe that there is hope for zebra apps and maybe yes. I have to believe that because as you say otherwise we could just end the book now. <laughs> but I do believe yes. that there is hope and I'm also like I see your point in, in Natalie versus Richard, but I also have a bit of hope that Natalie might yes. come around because I did I yes. think we do see a thread of light in her yes. like yes. at the offside when she talks about the original values. I do think that she still has yes. like I think that deep, 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 deep down, she might still be purpose driven. And of course, I know that that right now she has this very commercial focus. Um, but I think that maybe with the right coaching and help and you know, um, activities, she might be able to to rediscover what her original idea was with this company. But it will take some help because she's not. Yeah, I, she's a bit far from that right now. I think Marie has done a better job than she's believed. After a few months, she awakened three persons around her. Natalie has a small awakening. Mark mm. is totally changed. He, he, he has found out that there's, there are people around me that actually have the same dreams I, that I had. So even old people can <laughs> hear people know. And, um, uh, and, and Chuck, mm. uh, it seems that uh, this experiences uh, had of course uh, made him de disillusionated uh, but it seems that he could be waking up so if I was Marie I would stay <laughs> because I, I can see what what has happened already but uh, yeah. of course you're going to to ruin that when we move on if I know you might I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so 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 of course when I'm asking you about that I'm also a bit curious. Why do you stay with the company? And uh, maybe this question is rude, not to you, but to, to, to our time. Why do we stay with the company? Mm. Is it because I want my own purpose in life being fulfilled? Or is it as it was in the old day? I have a duty. I have a duty to my family, to my company and to my country. Uh, so that's why I go to work, and secondary maybe I get my own uh, my own needs uh, fulfilled. Um, so in this story, uh, I think there's a lot of people here, and maybe also because they reflect real life, that goes to work because they want to be recognized. That's the word we hear. They want to be acknowledged. They want to. Uh, have freedom, they want to uh, design their own jobs, things like that is what we hear from these guys. Is that a fair requirement? And if so, how on earth can we as companies support these uh, desires? And if you answer that correct, you would be extremely rich. <laughs> 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 I think an important, uh, maybe third reason why people stay is convenience. It's easier to yeah, stay than to go. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I think that a lot of people who may not 
no longer believe that they can get the fulfillment that they're looking for in a company. Uh, they just stay because they are there. Not not the obligation piece uh, any longer, but more well. This is this is what I do every morning. This is a, this is an issue. We sometimes talk about quiet quitting. Is that an issue, or is it okay to stay and uh, make your eight to four job and go home and forget everything about my job? And when I'm there, I'm not committed. I may be a bit engaged, but that's it. Is that an issue? And and is, would it be an issue for Zebra? Uh, in my mind. Uh... That that is an issue, uh, and not in the short term, but mm. over a longer period of time, uh, that some sums up to neglect. So mm. uh, then we would have um, issues that do not get resolved. Uh, we have more and more uh, dust and clutter uh, settling, like we have in the basement uh, of Zebra. Mm. Uh, it stuff <laughs> is piling up. Uh, in love with the bones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's good. So over time, it becomes a problem, but for the short time, the short term, it, it, you you could you could have you could carry people who are not engaged for a while. Yes. So there's one person that I recognize from this duty perspective. That's the chef. Mm. <laughs> Joseph. And, and 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 is is he a good role model for the rest of us? Uh, and could he be part of the solution? Not in his current role, but, but in an organization. Because he's there to serve and, uh, and to do his duty and uh, and so on. So he's a serving person. Hmm. I forgot, Joseph, when you asked us who we aspire to be. I would also maybe aspire to be a bit like Joseph. Yes. He's a I good guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Managed, but I would. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but are we seeing a future where that type of person is coming back? Or is it the end of people that serve others because of the service? I hope that there will continue to be people like Joseph. And uh, because I think something he displays is high emotional intelligence. intelligence. Yes. Yes. He's mm -hmm. very observant and he's like, he's not just, you know, service a service organ he's he's very actually personal with marie and he he sees her and recognizes that she doesn't get lunch mm. um, that often she skips lunch mm. and he's like he's not afraid to actually address that um so i think that type of employee is, is very valuable as you also say christian so i would hope that it's a mm. it's a type of person that would be that we would have many of in our organizations but he will not drive the development, so he had to be managed in another way. Uh, so, so, so this is this. It is a very good story you have made, and uh, and thank you so much for uh, for, for for letting us into your uh, uh, your universe there, and and thank you also for for, for all your uh, your responses here. Uh, there's a lot of other things I would like to hear from you guys, but. Um, but uh, I would follow the uh, the development, the progress of the story, uh, and uh, I'm sure I will learn a lot of new things. Uh, I already have done that. So thank you very much for that. It has been a pleasure. Likewise, Christian. This was uh, these were some great questions, and uh, now I see the story in a little bit different light. Maybe we'll invite you back in two chapters time and uh, <laughs> talk, more. talk to your customer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Christian.